All right, John Bennett here with LogicProX.net, and this is the first video in the series of many to come. I just registered the domain today, LogicProX.net. I just downloaded the very latest version of Logic Pro, which is X, stands for 10. I've been mixing on Logic Pro for about six years since I switched over from PC to Mac. I do remixes for cheerleading teams, um, all over the world, I have a crew of guys that mix with me. And so primarily I do remixes um, that are run about two, two minutes and 30 seconds. Whether it's a remix for a cheerleading team or other things, I've got a lot to share and I'd love to go over some things with you. So I just opened up Logic Pro, the new Logic Pro here. And in this video, I'm gonna show you the basic workflow I go through to bring in songs that we're gonna remix into the project. Um, this is starting very, very basic, but I think, you know, I wish somebody had made videos like this when I started out. So first thing um, you'll notice is that I'm probably going to stumble over things because the keyboard shortcuts have changed and they've moved things around quite a bit. So um, first thing I do, I open up a new project. Um, if I'm not starting with a template, I'll open a new project. Sometimes I'll have some basic templates laid out, but I wanted to start clean on this. First thing I'll do is change my BPM to 145 or 150. And I'll go about the business of getting some new music to pull in. So this is kind of a cool trick. I'll show you. I've got a couple songs I just downloaded in my downloads folder. So I go right into my downloads folder here and I've got a couple songs here, right here, that I've just downloaded. So the first thing I do is I pop open a program called Mixed in Key. And the reason I do this is I want to, um, I want to use this program to not only get the key of the song <clears throat> for harmonic mixing purposes, but more importantly, the BPM tagged with this song. So I drag them right on here. It analyzes these songs. It'll only take a second. So all three songs have been analyzed. And the next thing I do is I come over and I've created a folder here on the left side called Automatically Add to iTunes. I drag them right into iTunes, this folder, and I pop over to iTunes. I have my iTunes library sorted by date. So those three songs have just come in. Those will be synced up to my iCloud or iTunes Match account where I'll have them available anywhere anywhere I go on my iPhone, iPad, whatever. So, but more importantly, I've got this BPM column here. And I'm looking, a lot of times we're, we're mixing things in this 120 to 140 BPM range for the types of mixes I'm doing. So we'll just start with, um, hmm, I actually want to play with, let's see here. We'll just do Tom Ford, how about that? So. Typically, and I usually use a, a dual screen monitor. So let me pop this stuff out of the way. And I'll just drag this right into the project. Okay. Make some more room here. Now, the first thing I need to do is get this to match BPM wise. Uh, back in the day, we used to sample all these songs. There's no reason to do that. And it's actually better to not sample because I may want, I want access to the entire song, basically. Double click it. As it turns out, this is probably a bad example because this track is actually already 145 BPM. But we'll do another example in a second. Go to tempo. This is all new, so I'm kind of fumbling my way through it. This is not the Logic, old Logic Pro is different workflow altogether. So what you can do, you can do beat detection, and it actually detects the beat at 145, it's just fine. So oh, the next thing I do is get my track lined up on the one. So if we listen here. I'll pop Molly, I'll rock Tom Ford. I'll pop my 
And so that's a down B right there. And always use the odd numbers for your downbeat. Zoom in and get it nice and close. You get more precise if you want. So it should. Four. I'll pop Molly, I rock time four. I'll pop Molly, I rock time. Okay. Let's do another one so you get a better example. So if we want to do, I want to bring in another track. This one we know is 128. So we'll see what happens here. So when you drag tracks in, by the way, Logic converts them to an AIF file. So you're not actually working and um, doing any, any kind of information to the original track. So I'm going to mute this one. We're going to go down here, take a look at this. Go edit tempo. Use beat detection. And it, again, it, it got it at 127.9, 128 basically. So we're going to change this from 128 to 145 to match our project. So I actually finally found the time and pitch machine. It's down here under functions. So what we're going to do. We know the original tempo is 128 and we want it to be 145. Process and paste. That'll take a second. So that's done. You can pop this down. And let's take a listen. In the beginning. So again, what I'm gonna do is put the one on a downbeat, just like probably right about there. I'll zoom in. Zoom in more You get it just right, right on that. You can see the number three, that's a, that's a one. Zoom back out. Usually I'll cut it too by hitting the command key and just double clicking here. I cut it right on the one. I usually don't need this beginning part. So now I've got the whole song. You can kind of make sure it lines up. I never thought it would be young when we were telling. So now you got the whole song. Usually at this point, I'll go through and I'll I'll chop the pieces I think I'm going to use. I'll show you real quick. Smiling in the photo booth. But we got closer. Yeah. So you wait. Tonight we'll just get it drunk. This start of the pace. So the hook right there, I usually chop it right at the five because I'll, I'll, it'll be a good transition here. So I know I'm going to probably use that. So there the verse comes in, chop it there. Make sure I'm chopping it right. It should be snapping it. It is snapping right where I want it. So that little piece right there, I'm probably going to use. And what I typically will do is just drag these other pieces to the end. I end up a lot of times going back to them later. And the reason I'm doing that, I drag them right on, on beat back here because I may use them later as I, as the mix progresses. This is not working like old logic. I've got to get used to this. Okay, great. I feel like a monkey hump in a football hump in a football here. I'm in troubles. So you just drag these out here because this is beyond the scope of my mix. My mix is gonna you know, only be two minutes and 30 seconds normally. So I got the piece I want here. I'll mute that. And then we go back to this one and take a listen. Pop Molly, I rock time four. I'll pop Molly, I rock time four. I'll 
So, I may not even use that, but you get the idea. That's the basic workflow of bringing songs into the project, and your project starts to take shape. Um, at this point, you only got tracks that you want to use, and then we fill in around it all of the pieces, builds, sound effects, and everything else. But that'll do it for this video. Hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you soon.